everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thanks for stopping by for another video. Welcome to the tech side. In this video, we're gonna be going over the brand new Mac Studio, and then we will be comparing it to the Mac Pro, the last generation Mac Pro that so many people are still using. We're gonna talk about the differences in specs. We're gonna look at how they perform in Final Cut Pro and Lightroom, uh, and then we will talk quickly about how they perform in Pro Tools for audio production. So this will be a big overview of the differences between these two computers. And if you have the old Mac Pro, hopefully this will help you decide if you'd like to upgrade. Before we get into this, I did a whole other video uh, comparing these two computers going over the music production side. So if you're into music production and you really like to dig in to the differences between them, or if you just want more in-depth information about the differences between these, I'll put a link in the description below so you can go check that out. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there. Now, unboxing the Mac Studio was a pretty cool ordeal. The, the handle is nice and thick and fabric, the box is very heavy duty, and uh, the way that the, the sides of it like tilted out, it just it was a cool unboxing experience. It's the kind of box you'd hate to throw away when you're done, but is there any really point in keeping them? Now this is the base model Mac Studio with the 10 core CPU, a 24 core GPU, the 16 core neural engine. I left it at 24 gigabytes of unified memory, but I did upgrade the hard drive to be a one terabyte solid state drive. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with this computer yet, on the back you've got four Thunderbolt 4 ports, 10 gigabit ethernet cable, you got the power supply, it's got a built-in power supply, so no wall war. Next to that, you have two USB Type-A ports, a full-size HDMI port, headphone jack, and the power button. I think the power button's a good place to start because it's the only negative that I have about this computer. Now, the power button is on the curve of the body of the computer, and it's completely flush. You can almost not feel it. Now, I think that would be fine if it was on the front of the computer, but you're gonna be reaching behind the computer to turn it on every single day. There should have been a bump, uh, you know, it should have been raised. There should have been some way to tell the power button so that way you're just not fumbling around pressing all over the corner of the computer every time you try to turn it on. I actually hate the power button on this computer, but it really is the only negative thing that I have to say about it. Now running Lightroom and Photoshop on the Mac Studio is, is really fast. It's just so snappy. This has the M1 Max chip in it, so it's the second fastest thing you can buy from Apple. Apple at the moment. And just general day-to-day -day activities, uh, surfing the web, watching videos, uh, spreadsheets, it's so fast and it's so snappy. Now on the front of this Mac Studio, you've got the SD card reader and you've got two USB-C ports. Now if you were to upgrade to the M1 Ultra chip, those then become two more Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now for me personally, I don't have a use for six Thunderbolt 4 ports. Uh, four Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-C ports, and two USB-A ports, that is, that's plenty for me. Now I've already edited a handful of videos on this computer, and one of the things that really stood out to me was the transfer speed when I had a card in the SD card reader and a USB-C hard drive, solid state hard drive plugged into the front of it. It was transferring data at almost one gigabyte per second, which to me is, that's really fast, that's great. So there are two examples here to show the power differences between these two computers that I wanna talk about today. The first one is a Final Cut Pro export time, and the second one is a Pro Tools session CPU usage. Now this video that I'm exporting is actually up on my other channel, so you can go watch it if you'd like to when you're done with this one. It is all 4K, 422, 10-bit footage, that's S-Log3 from my Sony a7 IV. The video is about nine and a half minutes long, and there's LUTs and a color grade over everything and some text titles thrown up here and there, along with some B-roll uh, thrown randomly up in a second layer and some music spread throughout the shots. Now the Mac Studio did this export in six minutes and 45 seconds, which I think is pretty good. The Mac Pro, however, after an hour, it was only 42% the way through the export and I just stopped it because I, I had to go get my kid from school. So I don't even have a final export time to give you guys because it would have been well over two hours on the Mac Pro. Now for the past year and a half, I've been running the M1 MacBook Pro. So I've been editing all my videos on that and I've kind of forgotten how much better these M1 chips are than the old Intel stuff. It's just, it's shockingly better. Now the next video that goes up will be a full comparison between the M1 Max Mac Studio 
and the M1 MacBook Pro, and we'll talk about all of these same things, Final Cut exports and Pro Tools CPU usages and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video when it comes up here in a couple days. Now, when I finally canceled the export on the Mac Pro, it was physically hot to the touch, like, like hot, not warm, it was hot. I've been running this Mac Pro here in my music studio uh, since about 2014, and it is quite the space heater. It, it puts out a lot of heat. I've never heard the fans on it. The fan is very, very quiet unless you put your ear right up next to it. However, the Mac Studio stays cool to the touch all the time, like cool, cool to the touch. It's never even warm, and I've never heard the fans ever once. So the next comparison between these two computers is in Pro Tools, and what I did is I created a signal generator in Pro Tools and printed that three minutes long uh, on a stereo track, and then I duplicated that track 119 times. So there's 120 stereo tracks here, and each of these tracks have two EQs, two compressors, uh, two instances of lo-fi, which is a saturation plugin, two delays, and two reverbs. So this Pro Tools session has 240 instances of reverb in it, which is pretty staggering, a little unrealistic. But I really wanted to push this to the max. <laughs> I said, I did it again. I said that in my last video, M1 Max, get it? I really wanted to push this to the max to, to see how big of a difference there was between these. The Mac Pro almost wouldn't play this session. I had to restart the computer a couple times. I had to make sure there were no other pieces of software or applications open. To change the hardware buffer size. Took a little bit to get it to even play the session. And when it did play the session, it was pretty choppy and uh, the counter and the cursor were not running smoothly. And the reason for that is because it was using about 97% of the CPU uh, just to play back this session. So pushing it right to its limit, there's about nothing more left in the tank for it. Now when I opened up this exact same Pro Tools session in the Mac Studio, the first thing that I noticed is it opened the session just fine, it played it back just fine, there were no glitches or hiccups, it wasn't stuttering, uh, the cursor and the timer was running just fine and super smooth. It was clearly well within its comfort zone. So playing back this session took about 64% of the CPU from the Mac Studio. Now this is with Pro Tools not even optimized for M1, so Pro Tools is still running through Rosetta on this computer, and whenever Avid gets around to updating it, I think there will likely be a significant performance increase, and I think what we'll probably see is that the Mac Studio, the base model Mac Studio, is around double the power of the old Mac Pro. That's incredible. Now the specs on this Mac Pro, it's got a 3.7 gigahertz quad-core processor, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and it's got the internal 256 gigabyte hard drive. So the question we're trying to answer is if you still have and are currently using a trash can Mac Pro, is it time to upgrade? Is this a worthy successor? I think in every way it is. It's one and a half to two times more powerful for audio production, uh, and it is clearly crazy more powerful for video production. A little over six and a half minutes export to what would have been well over two hours export. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down below and I'll try to get back to everybody. If you haven't yet, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the links in the description and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.